Alright, Strippy Moose 99. What I'd like to do today is do an episode of Factorio, something different for the channel. And just see if there's any interest in watching a Let's Play or learning a little bit more about the game. I have three favorite games, uh, Banished and Skyrim and Factorio are my go-to games. And Factorio is a great game. It um, has all the building and the sort of um, base building stuff that you really like. And there's an option for enemies, which some people don't like. I don't personally like it all that much. But for this play, I'm going to turn the enemies on. Just so you can see what they're like. Um, I will nerf them a bit. To make sure it's a little bit easier to play. Easier to focus on the build. And, and just because I don't really like the enemies that much. So let's get started here. We're going to go single player, new game. Free play is the way to go here. Now there's different ways of setting up the map. So I'm going to go through a kind of a way I like to play. I'm going to play on something called a Rail World. And what that does is there's patches of ore all over the place. Rail World makes a setting where the patches are fewer, farther between, but bigger the further you go from the original spawn site. So it's kind of a... Um, yeah. You have to go further, which means you have to fight enemies, but the patches will be bigger. And that means you won't have to... Uh, I worry about establishing new ore patches all the time, which is a real pain. So, we're going to go Rail World. I'm going to up the richness on iron and uh, copper and coal. And we're going to go into Terrain tab here. And we're going to bring up the preview. So this is a preview of the map seed that's been picked so far. And I'm going to customize the, the water settings here for... You know, I want a little bit of water, but I don't want tons and tons. And I don't want super huge either. So, even something like that seems reasonable. Trees I'm going to leave on default. Cliffs, um, cliffs are one of those things that I turn off. But they're natural ter terrain blockers to block enemies, although they interfere with building quite a bit. That's why I don't like them. But up to you. Enemies, um, enemy bases here. I'm going to nerf this a bit, so I'm going to turn the frequency down to 50% and the size down to 50%. So it's enough to give you an idea of biters, but I don't want to be fighting biters all the time. Super important uh, setting here if you want a quiet start to get yourself a foothold is to make your starting size 600%. And that pushes back the biter's nest. Um, gives you a chance to get some a factory established. Evolution we're not going to mess with. On the advanced tab here, we're going to leave pollution alone. There's one here, research queue availability. Now, typically, if you, if you don't have mods, you'd put this on always. Um, research can be a pain to be constantly going into the queue all the time. So what this does is allows you to queue up a number of uh, technologies. I've got a quality of life mod called auto research which you can queue up a lot of uh, research items and then it'll also pick from the unresearch list once you run out of your queue so you don't necessarily have to keep jumping into the menu all the time so I'm going to set it for this to never but you would set that to always if you don't have a mod alright so I'm put this back on the terrain tab I want to look for a starting area here now we're going to spawn right in the middle so I want to see a Starting area that's got additional iron patches around it, additional copper, and additional coal kind of nearby. This actually isn't a terrible start. There's copper way down there. Um, you know, we might just give this a roll here rather than uh, sit here re-rolling. Sometimes you can kind of re-roll a bunch of times until you see one that kind of suits your eye. But let's go with this one. Okay, first thing that's going to happen is we're going to have a crash. So the whole premise here is we've crash landed on a planet. Uh, we have a pickaxe, a little bit of resources, and we've landed on a hostile planet, but also a planet that's rich in resources. And what we have to do is build a huge factory that'll be able to build us a rocket ship to take us into space and back home. So you have to build a base. Um, and with enemies turned on, there's going to be um, hostilities and we're going to have to protect the factory from the, the enemies and stuff like that. So 
So we'll tab out of this. Very first button you want to hit is this Alt button here. And what that does is allows what, um, or reveals what's in containers. So pieces of our craft ship actually are modded as containers. Now, you can keep this around. You see it's got some storage and stuff. But the first thing I usually do is just kind of clean all this wreckage up. Which you do by right clicking with your axe, just right clicking with your cursor. And just clean up the junk here. And what that'll do for us is make this area of the map buildable for one, but also give us some uh, resources that we're recovering from the wreckage here. Okay, and can't reach, so I have to run closer. Now there's a few quality of life mods that I've got enabled here, and I'll go through those at some point. But let's just show you the beginning gameplay here. So basically it's a pro progression of manually crafting items over stuff that you mine with your pickaxe, and then different levels of automation until you're you're essentially building a small factory to build a medium-sized factory to build a bigger factory. Um, the biggest phrase from Factorio is the factory must grow. That's probably the most common phrase you'll hear. So let's pick up a few trees while we're here. Now I'm going to show you a couple map tricks here. So. I'm just going to put spawn. So I hit M for map, add tag here. And I'm going to put a spawn right where we crash landed. Now, what we can do with these patches too, is just to keep track of our usage, is this coal here, for example, is 763k or 1000 coal, right? So I'm just going to put that number in a tag right there. 1.1 million copper. Now you can also go in the icon here, select and put the actual copper symbol in there. But the color of the patch is pretty clear. This is 253k. And 1.3 iron. So you might be wondering why I'm doing that. And basically it's just to keep track of your usage. So you're going to be using these patches of ore. And if you look at it Every once in a while from the map, mouse over it, you can see how much you have left versus an indication of how much you once had, which is not a scientific tracking of usage, but it will give you an idea of what's going on and how quickly you're going to have to explore to find additional patches. So let's look at our inventory here by hitting E. Now we have a drill, a furnace, some wood, coal, stone, and iron plates. Down here we have a toolbar, and moving stuff onto the toolbar doesn't actually move it onto the toolbar, it just puts a symbol of it, or a linkage back into your inventory. So I like to um, track what we have here. So I'm going to bump all these things down, iron plates here, and this is our mining drill, and our furnace. So that's all the things we have in our inventory right now. But the other thing we can actually do is click on a blank uh, box here, go in here, and select, say, copper plates, and that'll show up there. We don't have any, so it's grayed out at the moment. But what that lets us do is sort of see at a glance what's in our inventory without opening it up, which I find to be highly useful. So I'll pop a few things on there. <coughs> now... What I want to do here is run over to the iron and have a little bit of coal and we're going to establish a little tiny manual iron mine here. Well, semi-automated, I guess. So we're going to put a burner drill down and if we mouse over the drill we see uh, we have 2.6 thousand iron ore available. And it's got an output arrow, and we'll put that into a furnace. We'll take the stack of coal. We'll control right click, and then control left click. So that put half the stack in the top, and the remainder in the bottom. So now you can see we've got iron plates being uh, done. So the drill is mining the raw ore, and the furnace is turning that into plates. Alright, so I let that run for a little bit so we get some build up here. Now if we go in here, 
you can see a burner mining drill takes nine iron and five stone or three iron plate three iron gear wheels and a stone furnace so when you have iron or stone in your inventory hold down shift and left click on it and that'll build as many furnaces as we can out of the stack of stone there if you just wanted one furnace just click it one time but holding down the shift builds the whole or the whole possible stack so now we have 13 stone furnaces and let's get a little bit more iron now we have 24 plate I'm gonna build two burner mining drills there now the big issue here in the very very beginning is you're gonna be manually feeding these furnaces and drills and the fuel you're gonna need is coal and coal is hard to come by other than these mining patches and then you can find some huge rocks that will have coal in them and you can mine that and get some stone and some coal but sometimes those are rare on a map okay actually there's a good example here there's a huge rock there and you can see 37 coal 37 stone so that's a good find and see a normal big rock there only has stone and another big rock there we'll pick these up because we need furnaces so and then we'll just pop in there and build furnaces so if you're just running around you have stone in the inventory and not do anything else build furnaces in the beginning anyways so here we are in a patch of coal so i'll show you a little trick to start collecting coal now these are facing each other I'm going to go in here and I'm going to put a little bit of coal in one of them. Pull it out. So that effectively put one coal in there. Now the trick here, they're facing each other. So they burn coal to mine coal, but they use less fuel than they do accumulating when they mine. If I said that properly, it'll be a net gain anyways. So if they're facing each other, they're feeding each other coal. But they're also accumulating coal in their inventory. So you can see that was blank before. Now there's six accumulated. And we can go in here and go control left click and harvest that. So we got a bit of coal out of that. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go on pause. But I'm going to run back and forth between the iron and the coal. And I'm going to build up the iron mining a little bit. And build up the coal mining a little bit. And I'll be back when I've done that. All right, we're back after a few minutes here. I've been running back and forth between the coal and the iron. And you can see we've now got, um, how many we got here? Six, 12, um, 16 of these guys. Now, the way I've got them laid out here is a big circle. You can do them back to back in pairs or whatever. But it's the same basic concept. They're just feeding each other and accumulating coal. Okay. I might actually even do a couple more pairs here just because coal is really, really important at the start here. So why don't we do, I'm going to pick patches where there's available coal. So let's do this. Okay, so there's some coal accumulating. Kind of a cheesy way of doing it, but it works. Now I have one extra miner here and um, mining rocks is not a lot of fun so i'm going to set this into this rock patch here and not into a furnace but into a box <clears throat> now the way they make boxes here um right now we can only do out of wood so let's just click that right click that a couple times and we'll make a stack of boxes we'll put that in the arrow and we'll throw some coal in there and that should uh, yeah That'll give us some stone. You can see there's already one in the box already. It'll take a while to accumulate, but there you go. Um, let's run back down to the iron and see where we're sitting here. Okay, so I've got four of these guys here. And I think we've got enough to expand quite a bit. So I'm going to turn all of that into burners. And we are... Yeah, we did use a, most of our rock there. Or most of our furnaces, I should say. So let's harvest this stone here. Hit the 
this is another one out here. Sometimes you can't tell. Okay, so essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to run back and forth some more. I'm going to expand this quite a bit bigger on the iron. And then I'm going to start into the copper patch. And when I've done that, I'll come back and show you what we're up to. And then we can take the next step. Alright, so we're back here. This is what a string of the iron looks like right now. It's probably overkill, but you need a lot of iron. So right now I've got 897 plates. Oops, sorry. I put a little mod in here for running speed. Um, called uh, toggle running speed. So I'm going to use that to transfer between areas here. Um, I will not use it for fighting. I'll just use it for quality of life. And then once we have um, transportation and stuff like that, I'll take it out and we'll use cars and uh, other things. But just to do this, I was pausing a lot there just to run. So uh, let's see. Now we've got some stone happening here. A little bit of brick. This is poorly set up, so we won't get a lot out of it. But if you do stone directly out of the miner into a box, it's stone stone out of a miner into a furnace it becomes a brick and you can see we got 26 bricks there and that's what our cop or uh, coal looks like I'm gonna harvest some over here and let's go down and have a quick look at our copper here and that's what the copper looks like so we've got a fair accumulation of resources at the moment so time to talk about the next steps here so what we want to get to is electricity so the way to do that in vanilla is there's a boiler and a steam engine here. Now the ratio is one boiler will provide enough steam for two engines. And this is an offshore pump that will pump out of a lake. So one pump will have, provide enough water for 20 boilers. So that's a lot of power because it's um, 900 kilowatts per engine. So we're going to build... I'd say half a lineup just for the moment. So let's build 10 boilers, um, 20 steam engines. This is a bit overkill for the start, but I want to show you a classic setup here. We're going to build an offshore pump, and we're going to build some um, underground pipes and some straight pipe. And we're going to build some electric poles here. No point in generating electricity if you can't transport it. Now we're going to need belts and inserters to feed coal. And uh, let's do a couple of those. And we're going to need these electric miners here to actually mine coal in a more uh, robust fashion, fashion than we currently are. So I don't have enough material for all that. So I'm going to go on pause, accumulate the material and then we'll come back when we're ready to build a power setup here. Okay, that crafting took a while. So um, while that was going on, I ran around the map here in an ever-expanding square, I guess you'd call it, um, just to discover some terrain. And what I was looking for was a large patch of coal, or larger than our starting patch here of 763K. So up here there's a little patch of 4.2, but not really sufficient for our purposes of building steam power. So a nice little patch of 16 down here. I'd like to get to the 36 million over here, but it's a little far away. So what I'm going to do is we'll run down here and size this up. So what I have in my inventory now, I've got some burner inserters. These run up coal, uh, regular inserters up electricity, some belts here. I've got 16 electric mining drills. I'm just building some more furnaces right now because you always need furnaces. And we have some pipes here. And in the inventory here, we've got an offshore pump. And we've got our boilers and steam engines here. So, and we also got a bunch of coal here. And we should probably get some more coal. Oh, I'll turn that down a bit on the running. Okay. And I'm going to fill up on coal. And then I'm going to go back on. Uh, that's. Full. I should probably get rid of a little bit of that. I don't want that much. So let's pump some back into the copper mining here. Okay, I'll meet you back down at, down below near that co uh, coal patch. And we'll start in on our steam engine here. 
All right, here we are down below. This is by the 16 million patch here. So what you want for steam engine is nearby water. Um, so you need to pipe water into the boilers for steam. And you want coal to provide the energy for the boilers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start building steam engines probably uh, in a pattern up and over here. I'll show you what I mean in a minute. So we're going to put these miners in. We have 16 of them, so we'll do um, maybe eight or so. Now the collection area of these miners is a bit bigger, so they're overlapping here. They're actually the way I've laid them out. But that's okay, and they'll just collect um, more rapidly if you do that. Some people space them out, like say something like that. Um, but I don't think that's as effective as just doing it like this. All right, so just place them side by side, put them in directly on the belt. Now, each one of these has an arrow going onto the belt, but they're gonna insert on different sides of the belt, so the belt will be full in this configuration. So we're gonna run this up. So we're gonna get to just above the water here. Clear a few rocks out of here and some, some of the true enemy, which are actually trees, believe it or not. Okay, so, oops, okay, grab it, the Q, and pull it up, okay. So now we're going to have coal appearing somewhere up here. So we can bring the water out of this lake here. So we might as well start our first row right here. So I'm going to take a boiler, place it one back, and remember the ratio is one boiler provides two steam engine. Okay. And because you need power poles in between here, I'm going to put power like that. And we'll put two boilers side by side, four steam engines. Now, because we're going to put a power pole in here, we need to leave a space. So we'll take a straight pipe, put it there. And then we're going to put two more boilers, straight pipe, um, yada yada, until we have what I would call half a row built here. Because remember, it's 20 boilers to a pump. And I've only built 10 boilers here. So we're going to do... Uh, let's get rid of that tree there. I'm going to do what I would call, like I say, half a row or half a lineup. Okay. So let's put our rest of our boilers in. Straight pipe. Now I'm doing this manually right now. Later on, there's something called robots. Um flying construction robots in particular that you can build research and build and they'll do it for you once you have a pattern or a blueprint laid out but at this stage of the game we're building things manually okay so that's together now what we're going to do here is we're going to take burner inserters and we'll put them at the beginning of each one of these boilers and we'll extend up our belt here okay so there's a burner inserter, when the coal comes up to belt, it'll power the burner inserter and it'll, it'll pick up coal and put it in. Um, what you're going to want to do sooner or later is put a regular electric inserter in, because the burners work off of coal, not electricity, which is good for startup. But they don't really have the speed or capacity to keep up when you're like fully using this lineup. So I'm going to put those in. And um, you'll notice that they're now going or showing like a lightning bolt, red lightning bolt, which means they're out of power. Okay, so their inserters are in, they run off electricity, but there's no electricity being generated yet. So I'm going to run those power poles down to the miners. And we're going to do that. And the miners are showing the same thing here with the red lightning bolt. And so there we have 16 miners there which is more than enough to bring coal up to these guys but there's no power so the reason I brought a bunch of coal down in my inventory is I'm going to put coal in these boilers to get them primed okay but it's still not working because we don't have any water going into our steam here so I can use these underground pipes and I'm going to hold it and run and what that does is basically it takes the pipe underground and pops it back up so it helps with building and helps with um, 
with real time as far as frame rates and stuff like that. But for right now, just it's a cleaner build to use undergrounds. So I'm going to put pump here and it's facing up. So I'm going to have to put a straight piece. Then I'm going to use my undergrounds and I'm going to run over here. Okay. And I'm going to link this up. Okay, now you can see there's water running into our boilers. I don't like the way this looks, so I'm going to pull this up and just kind of center that just for looks. Don't have to do that, but it makes me happy. Okay, so now what you see, there's coal manually placed in the boilers. Water's going in. This pump, by the way, doesn't require any power. It's kind of a magical thing. And these engines are starting to puff steam. So if I click on a power pole, you're going to see the first electricity report here. So this is a little bit weird to understand in the beginning, but the middle piece at the top, this bar that says production, it says we're, this is 1.4 milliwatt or megawatts out of 18 megawatts. So what this is showing is our total potential production of power is 18 megawatts. And what we're using right now is 1.4 megawatts. So I overbuilt, as usual, the power setup to start with anyways. On the left here, there's a box that says satisfaction. So the middle box of production box looked at it from the point of view of the power generation. Satisfaction looks at it from the point of view of the users of the power. So the satisfaction bar says the users, users of the power want 1.4 megawatts and they're receiving 1.4 megawatts. So they're green and happy. Okay. So what you really want to watch here is your production box and your and you want to make sure that you're actually producing or your potential, sorry, your potential to produce is much higher than your actual usage. Okay. And the way in the beginning to add more power is just add more setups like this. So if we took like a, say a copy blueprint here of this guy and put it like so, with maybe a space in between. Okay. Plunk that down. Now that would be what I would call a full row of steam power. So one yellow belt, although you might need to go to red, but um, in the beginning, 10 boilers and 20 engines will work. I think it's when you go red belts, which is the next step of faster capacity belts, so you can go to 20 boilers and 40 engines, but that's how you would do it. And then you just bring another belt coal up and add another row, et cetera, et cetera. And you can build quite a large, robust steam uh, steam power setup doing that. Okay, but blueprints and stuff, don't worry so much about it right now. Just know that that's a proper ratio is for your power setup. And this is a really clean build that'll work for you every time. Now, I did talk about pollution a little bit. So if we go under our map here, over here there's a little button that says pollution. It's the red one. So this shows the pollution we're already creating here. And um, <laughs> trees absorb pollution, but we're on a desert biome from the looks of it here. So our pollution is actually spreading pretty quick. That's actually a tip. If you're a beginner, you don't want to worry about pollution spread at the beginning. Um, go in a densely treed area. That'll slow the pollution spread down. It'll make it a big pain to build, which is why I usually like desert biomes, but it's something to think about. So anyways, um, the coal that we manually loaded into these boilers was enough to power up the miners down below. Okay, so now we have these miners actually pumping up the coal. And you see because I placed them directly on the bus and on both sides of the bus, um, this belt is actually full. And we're overproducing coal right now, at least for the amount of power we're using. Okay, if we look on the map here to turn the pollution cloud off, our original spawn area is up above here. So we probably want to bring the power up there. And then we can start expanding into like these larger iron fields and stuff like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this power pole here. And I'm going to start moving up. Now you can run and hold it in your hand, but if you're running through an obstacle, it'll kind of put you off path. So you have to keep an eye on it here. Oh, it looks like we run into a lake, so we're just going to go around that lake. Now 
Okay, we're kind of dodging and juke it around here, but this will bring the power up here. Now, with biters on, it's probably not a great idea to have a base that's spread out. You want to, might want to be more compact. But with the rail world start, rail world start and the uh, ore patches spread out, yeah, it is what it is. Okay, so we're up near our original spawn now. We've got power here. If we click on the pole, we're, uh, looks like once the miners did their original job, we were using like one point something megawatts. Now we're only using four kilowatts, and that's just power in the inserters, putting coal in. So our power usage right now is not high. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to handcraft a couple of labs here. And if you see these red beakers in my inventory, what that is, is I've handcrafted some science. Okay, so if you come in here, this is automation science. It's the very first level of science. And the way what they're made out of is one copper plate and one iron gear. So you can handcraft these at least to get started here. So while those labs are building, I want to come into our science here. Now, automation here is what we're looking for. This is going to build an assembler machine, and that'll allow us to start automating some of this stuff. So we're going to select that, okay, and hit T to get out. Up in the top right here, you can see it says automation. Now I'm actually going to go into my auto, um, auto <laughs> automated science research mod with um, Shift T, and I'm just going to tune this up so it only does the red level of science which is the only one available to us right now in vanilla there's actually uh seven levels of science this very last one on the edge the, the white one you can only get that by launching a rocket okay so i'm gonna have automation at the top of our queue it's already selected but that's okay and i want to look down here and see what else we want so we probably want Logistics for more uh, options on our belts. Right now we only have straight belts. We want undergrounds and splitters. And I'm going to want gun turrets pretty quick here. And steel axe will help us um, chop down trees and mine stuff. And armor I should probably think about. Optics is light, so that's usually pretty useful. And... Because we're going to have turrets here and our pollution cloud is spreading pretty quickly. There is some science here around uh, weapon shooting speed and physical projectile damage. We'll make our turrets and our rifles more effective. Effective, sorry. So we're going to do that. Um, and maybe we'll take militaries. Ah, anyways, we'll queue some stuff up. But automation is the first one and the main one. So now our labs have built here. So I'm just going to do a little beginner lab setup, and I'm just going to manually feed these here, the beakers, so I'm going to go control right click, control left click, so that put 25 in each. And maybe what I'll do is I'll build a couple more labs here, yeah, like maybe six more or something. And it looks like we're out of coal in some of these. Now they stopped working, so that means they're probably full. Okay, so the coal's getting pretty low. So I have quite a few plates here. I have quite a bit of coal, so let's try and actually... Yeah, we'll fill all these up. So let's control left quick and sweep across there. And I'm going to run up over here. And let's do that. Let's take out the bricks out of the inventory. Put some coal in here. Yeah, I've still got my running mod on, I know, but... That's what we're going to do. Okay, so that sound indicates that our research is completed here. So we're going to run back down here. And this will continue on with the queued up stuff. So now we can build something called Assembly Machine 1. So the total raw there is um, basically iron and copper. Okay, so we're going to build 10 of those. And that'll take a minute, so I'm just going to go on pause while that happens. Alright, we have five assemblers built, five more on the way shortly. We finished the logistics um, research, which gives us the ability to build underground belts here and splitters. So I'm just going to build a couple of those just so we can demonstrate them. 
Um, what we're going to do is we're going to put a belt in here. And I put down uh, the additional labs that we built as well too. Actually we have two more so let's add those quickly. Okay, so that gives us a total of eight labs for the moment. I'm going to put an inserter here. I'm going to complete the belt. Okay, now what builds um, the beakers, or the science if you want to look at it that way, you can do it manually, but I was doing it, uh, I, I did it manually out of my inventory, but if you go into the assembler and you select the uh, red beaker here, you'll get the opportunity to do them via automation, which is what you're trying to get to here. So by the way, to copy what the setup is, you go shift right click, shift left click, okay, and that copies the setup for each of the uh, assemblers. Or any device actually that has a configuration okay so the input on these guys is copper and iron gears here right so let's put a belt up top take this belt up to the side so we're going to do input on the top and output on the bottom okay i didn't work out the ratios or anything here i just wanted to get this going to demonstrate it. I'll show you how to do ratios and stuff later in future episodes if you're interested in this game at all. Okay, so there's gears that we're going to make there. Actually, let's do it this way. Let's put a box here feeding in there. And that way we can put another one over here later. But I'm running out of inserters, so I'll just make a couple more here. Okay, um, and then what we want up here is a box with copper in it. Okay, this will all make sense in a minute here. So I'm going to put copper there, iron there. I'm going to make sure there's power going. Okay, so what this is doing is, because the box of copper is at the top, it's inserting on the far side of the belt, and because this... Uh, assembler making gears is at the bottom. It's starting on the far side of the belt. So it's using half a belt for each of those. But that's enough for now for the, the assemblers making the science. So you can see these guys are now um, outputting science onto the belt and it's being picked up by the labs. Now there's there's different ratios here. So if I look click on the assembler and look at the recipe, it'll say one copper plate, one iron gear, five seconds crafting time okay and the timing on the labs here varies and stuff but you can kind of look at it and see that we probably don't have enough assemblers making beakers for, beakers for the number of labs that we have all right so we can make this set up a lot more robust but i just wanted to show that and also get some science going here on a non-manually fed so I think this is a good point to leave the first video at, but showed you basically how to bootstrap up, how to get electricity going, how to get your first automated lab setup going, although the ratios, like I say, aren't perfect. Um, but the way this game works is you kind of work your way up, you notch your way up, okay? And actually, just before we leave, we should probably build a little bit of military here. Uh, let's build five turrets, and we're going to need some more iron for ammunition here. Okay, and we'll check out. I didn't see any biters' nests on the map yet, but our pollution cloud is kind of spreading pretty far, so even though we have a, a huge starting area, we're going to have to start thinking about at least the ability to defend ourselves. So I think we might as well craft some light armor out of iron plate as well, too. And some more iron will be used for ammunition now. This is the lowest level of ammunition. It's not super powerful, but it'll do in the beginning. But as the biters level up, you'll need to increase your uh, military tech. Okay, so that's, um, I think, episode one of, a, I'd call it a tutorial. Yeah, a tutorial for Factorio. Um, no idea if anybody's going to be interested in more Factorio, but I love this game. Be quite happy to do a series on it, and I could run it in conjunction with a Banished series. So 
please give me some feedback. Um, otherwise, I'll just judge it by the number of views and stuff like that. So um, that's Factorial. Take care. Bye for now.